Welcome to Jackie's Craft Table. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining me. I'm creating four cards in this video using a darling stamp set from Newton's Nook called Pumpkin Latte. I really adore the images in this stamp set. There's just something about this cute latte lady in her boots and scarf. I'm jumping in with a little bit of ink blending first. I'm creating my backgrounds. I'm using some post-it note tape to tape off an area where I can do my ink blending. I'm starting out with squeezed lemonade at the top. I'm going to use some fall time colors. I must not have cleaned off my brush the last time I used it because my ink was starting to get a little bit hazy looking, but I just kept on. My next color is called Carved Pumpkin. I'm using my makeup brushes to blend these on. This is a piece of Nina Solar White cardstock, and it's also my card base. This last color is called Vintage Photo. I'm just kind of going back and forth between the colors. And then I can peel off the tape and it gives me a nice crisp area where I can place my images. I'm going to reuse this tape for my second card. I really love how this one turned out. I don't mind that I got a bit of brown into the squeezed lemonade. It just works. For my second card, I'm going with my foam brushes to put down the squeezed lemonade just to get a more pure color. Once I get a lot of ink put down, I'm going to transition into my carved pumpkin. I'm just using my makeup brush for the orange color. This one is going to be a little bit darker than the first one. I'm just going back and forth between these two colors, getting a smooth blend. And then my last color is the Vintage Photo again. I really love playing with Distress Oxides. They're so creamy and fun to blend. This card base is going to be a little bit more bold than the first one. And then I can peel off the tape. And I think that looks so pretty. I love those colors. I got a bit of color onto the white part, but I can come in with a sand eraser to get rid of that later. And here are my two card bases. I'm going to stamp these images onto another piece of Nina Solar White cardstock, and I cut it down so it would fit in my mini Misty. I'm going to stamp up all of the images. I really love all of the sentiments in this little set as well. But I chose to use the Nina Solar White cardstock and my Simon Says Stamp Intense Black Ink because I'm going to pull out my Arteza Everblend art markers. And these are alcohol based markers. And the alcohol markers work really well on your Nina Solar White cardstock. So I do stamp these images up several times. This is a dye ink. And I find that I have to build up the darkness in several layers because I like a good crisp and dark image. But this ink is wonderful to use with your alcohol markers because it won't bleed. I'm going to stamp in the other images by hand. This just saves time because I'm going to stamp them several times. I'm going to stamp it out on a post-it note first just to make sure it stamps out clearly since these are new stamps. And I'll speed this up here. I just love all these little pumpkins and lattes and then the leaf image is so cute. I'm going to start out by coloring in her skin. And I'm using three different markers to do this. I'm starting out with my lightest marker first and then building it up to my darkest marker for the shadows on her hands. I'll have all of these markers listed over on my blog. Arteza has come out with a set of skin tone markers and I don't have that set yet. So I'm just making do with the markers that I have. It's such a small area to color in anyway. 
But I want to give her hands a little bit of dimension, so I'm adding some shadows on the backs of her hands and her wrists. These images were really fun to color in, and whatever medium you choose to color them in, it's going to be fun. And I'm going to speed up this video for the sake of time. Next, I'm working on her hair, and I'm going to start with the lightest color first and build up to the darkness. So I'm giving it a coat of this light yellow color, and I'm going to add some oranges. She's going to be kind of a redhead. And then for my darkest color. And then I do go back in with my medium color and then my lightest color again. She's going to have a blue coat, and I'm just putting down the first lightest color. And these Arteza Everblend art markers are really great because the nibs on them are so small. You can get into these small places really easily. And then I went ahead and added a darker blue just to add some shadows to give her a little bit of dimension. I loved coloring in her boots. They're so cute. So I started with my light brown, and then I go in with a dark brown. Her skirt is going to be pink and gray, and I'm just kind of going over the lines. And then the pumpkins were really fun to color in. The small one in the back is going to be darker because it is in the back. I don't want them to have a really smooth blend. So I'm going in with an orange and then a yellow ochre just to add some really bright highlights. And I don't blend those out really well, but I like how it turned out. It's kind of choppy and cute. You don't always have to have a smooth blend with your alcohol markers. There's lots of fun techniques you can do with them. And I'm not showing the rest of the coloring because I did unfortunately lose the footage to this. I'm going to emboss my sentiment right over my Distress Oxide blending. And you'll want to make sure that your Distress Oxide ink is dry, or else the embossing powder will stick to it terribly. I left mine out overnight. You don't have to wait that long, but that's just how my day ended. I didn't get a chance to finish them that night. So I put down my anti-static powder first, and now I am using my embossing ink and I can pour over the white embossing powder. I'll melt that with my heat tool. I'm being really careful so that I don't warp my card base. Just doing it very slowly. And now I can put these cards together. I have the coordinating dies to this set, so I die cut all of my images, and I also use the coordinating dies to cut out foam pieces for the latte ladies, just to give them a little more dimension to pop them up off the card a little bit. And I'm adhering that with some of my Jackie's Craft Table liquid glue. I have an Etsy shop at Jackie's Craft Table where I sell my glue, so if you're interested, go over there and check it out. I'm using an acrylic block just to hold them in place until they dry. It doesn't take very long. And then I can adhere all of my images onto my card base. I'm using my jewel picker. It helps a lot with these little die cuts. I'm gluing the die cuts right onto the card base. I'm not putting any foam tape behind them. I just wanted them to be pushed back in the scene. And then I can adhere the latte ladies down. I'm not positioning the latte ladies right in the center of my Distress Oxide blending. I wanted to have them kind of off onto the white of the paper. I think that looked cute that way. I'm going to use my sand eraser just to get rid of that smudge of ink I had there. For a last touch, I'm going to add some enamel dots. I'm adhering three onto each card. 
And I really loved these orange glossy ones. These are from Pink and Maine. They have beautiful glossy dots. I also decided to come in with a little bit of glitter pen just over the pumpkins and leaves and the wrapper on the latte. And that completes my first two cards. Those were a lot of fun to create. Moving into my third card, I'm going to use some of this Stonehenge craft cardstock. This is really fabulous cardstock to use when you're going to be coloring with your colored pencils. I cut mine down into a panel five and a half by four and a quarter, and I'm going to create my own pattern background by stamping some of the smaller images from this set. And I'm just turning my acrylic block so they're not facing the same direction. I'm also using some VersaFine Claire Fallen Leaves ink. This is a nice crisp ink that allows you to stamp right onto your panel with an acrylic block and it stamps out perfectly every time. I really love the dark brown color of this ink. It's almost black, it's so dark, but it just has a richness to it that I love. Next, I'm stamping out some of the leaves. And I'm just trying to fill every nook and cranny of this panel. And for my last image, I'm going to stamp out the PSL, the Pumpkin Spice Latte. I love using text on my pattern backgrounds. And that about finishes up this background. I'm not even going to color it in this time because I want the Latte Lady to be the star of this card. I want all of the focus to be on her. So I cut this out with a wonky stitch die. And now I can stamp out the Latte Lady onto another piece of the Stonehenge craft cardstock. And I'm using the Fallen Leaves ink this time too, just so she matches the card. And I'm going to also stamp a few more leaves, as well as the lattes and the pumpkins. I pulled out my Faber-Castell polychromos pencils to do this. And I also left the image of the Latte Lady on the door of my Mini Misty so that I can freshen up the lines when I'm done coloring her in. Sometimes the colored pencils can slightly obscure your stamped images. This paper has a really nice texture to it. It's really smooth, but yet it has enough texture so that it pulls the pigment off of your colored pencils and blends really lovely. So I'm going to give her some blue jeans under her boots. And this time her coat's going to be a light gray. And I do come in with the blue colored pencil just to add darker shadows on her coat. And it also adds a little more interest, just another color besides the gray. The leaves I colored multicolored. I just love how they look. And then her boots, I'm using a brown and a yellow ochre. I'll have these colors listed over on my blog as well. And with her hair, I'm starting with the darkest color first this time, and then my lightest, and then I come in with a medium color to blend those two together. Her scarf is going to be orange and blue to match her jeans. And then a little bit of a pink cuff on her shirt. I love how this bright white colored pencil just makes this latte pop. I pulled out my white jelly roll pen to add some highlights to the pumpkin and her hair and her coat, the buttons on her coat and her boots. And this is where I stamp her again just to crisp up the image. I'm going to do a little bit of ink blending over this patterned paper I created. And I'm using some Ink and Dinkadoo masking paper to do this. I'm using the negative piece 
from my faux stitch banner die cut that I used on this paper. I had a difficult time trying to put this masking paper down evenly on this panel, so I cut out a lot of fuss. I'm blending on some carved pumpkin. I really like how you can see the stamped images behind this ink. I thought it would cover it up completely, but I really love how this painted banner turned out. Now I can attach my panel onto a piece of pattern paper. Before I adhere it to my card base, I'm going to stamp the sentiment again with white embossing powder. And again, I let this ink dry before I attempted this. I put down my anti-static powder, and now I can ink up this image with my embossing ink from Hero Arts. And I do like to stamp it up a few times just to make sure it's good and sticky. I couldn't find my piece of type paper, so I'm just using this little book of pattern paper to catch the embossing powder so I can funnel it back in the little jar. And then I can melt that very carefully so it doesn't warp the panel. And now I can adhere it down onto my white card base. If your paper does warp, adhering it to your card base should help it flatten out a little more. I'm using some more fun foam behind my Latte Lady. And then I can adhere her down onto the card. I like how she is kind of popped out above the rest of the images that I'm going to glue down around her feet. These cards are all very similar, but I just wanted to give you some ideas of how you can get different looks from one design idea. I didn't draw any ground under her, but it doesn't look like she's floating on this card because of the position of my sentiment, as well as the little images I'm putting around her feet that kind of gives you an indication of ground going to add a few gemstones. I just love these brown gemstones. They're from Pretty Pink Posh. I'll have links to all of the products I used below as well as over on my blog. So I ended up using the image I colored in with alcohol markers just because it popped more off of this card. On my next card, I'm going to use the image that you saw me color in with my colored pencils. I'm using some Distress Oxide called Chipped Sapphire to put down on this banner that I cut out with craft cardstock. It's going to help differentiate this image from the craft cardstock banner I'm going to glue her to. I'm adhering down a piece of pattern paper first onto my card base. And then I'm going to use this bright piece of orange cardstock. And you'll see the edges peeking through. Before I adhere anything else, I want to stamp my sentiment, again with white embossing powder. I think I used that more than anything. I'm going to, again, stamp that up a few times to get it nice and sticky. I'm really enjoying this white embossing powder from Brutus Monroe called Alabaster White. And it's such a small image, it melts really fast. I'm using another Fun Foam die cut behind this image. And now I can adhere my banner piece onto the side of this card, trying to get that straight. I always just try to eyeball things, but I guess I could use a T-square ruler. I do have one in my stash, but I don't use it very often. And now I can glue down the Latte Lady. And the blue ink really helps to make her pop off of this card. I'm going to glue a few of these pieces above my sentiment. And then a few along the ground next to her. I really love the look of colored pencils on craft card stock. When you die cut them, sometimes it can be hard to make the images stand out or pop off of your cards. 
Let me know in the links below which card is your favorite. I'm curious to know whether you like the images colored in with alcohol markers or colored pencils better. I don't think I can really choose one over the other because I really love them both. They're just fun techniques to do. So here is my fourth card. It's really fun making these fall-themed cards. Thank you, my crafty friends, for joining me. I hope this inspired you to take one design and try to make many different versions of it. I had fun putting these cards together. I hope you all find the time to sit down and create something awesome today. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.